Shalom, shalom. In today's video, I'm talking about can Gen Z and millennials get rich and wealthy off of a nine to five? Let's talk about it. Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, there are a lot of Gen Z and millennial people that have this expectation that they are supposed to be living this lavish lifestyle. And oftentimes what Gen Z and millennials don't realize is the sense of entitlement you know they have also with the inability to be able to produce anything of value themselves and i'll tell you as a business owner i've always known that a nine to five is not gonna make you rich or wealthy and you know I'm thankful that the Most High Yah has allowed my family to be able to start a business because now we're entering into new territories. And it's not territories of wealth. You know, it's not territories of wealth. But, you know, millennials and Gen Z need to realize, okay, a nine to five, it, 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 it might just give you enough to be able to pay your bills at a low standard of living. If you got a, a medium or a high standard of living, you want, I want you to think about this. You know, working uh, 40 hours a week at Chick-fil-A is not gonna give you, you know, a medium standard of living or a high standard of living. Man, it, it blows my mind some of these videos of Gen Z and millennials talking about how much money they're spending on dates, the expectation that women have, uh, you know, wanting these men to be able to take them on $200 and $300 dates. And this stuff blows my mind. You got women that are, uh, you know, at the uh, older end of Gen Z, and you got millennials with these crazy, lavish expectations. And a lot of their money is getting uh, sucked away in convenience services. Man, I, I, I'm 35 years old but I've never used Uber Eats, Grubhub, any of those, sir. I've never used because I'm like, I got a car and I'm not about to pay somebody to, to, to bring my food and they pull it up to the house looking dirty. That just doesn't appeal to me. But a lot of these people, you know, are not working very uh, competitive jobs that have room for growth and increase, but are expecting to know uh, live in the best neighborhoods, live in sky-rise apartments, and there's a huge disconnect. There's definitely a huge disconnect between the expectations of millennials and Gen Zs in relations to the reality of things. You know, I can't encourage you enough as a millennial or Gen Z, one thing that we were told is or or promoted and parents promoted this when you get 18 you can go and be on your own and you grown and a lot of people had the expectation that when they're 18 i got to move out and try to uh, get all this stuff on my own biblically you don't see a man or a woman moving out of the home a man when he has found his wife and a woman when she is giving uh, you know, her father is giving away to her husband. That's the only time you see this. But we have adopted this uh, mentality of, okay, I'm 18, I got to get out and get my own place. Your credit be jacked up. You're working these little nine, you know, these little nine to five jobs, and they're not gonna pay for this this lavish lifestyle. You know, if you're somebody that's a Gen Z and you're trying to uh, figure this out or a millennial. Man, I can't tell you. 
man, you know, there's no shame in your game uh, buying furniture off let go, buying furniture off Facebook Marketplace. There's no shame in that. You know, I'm 35 years old and I still buy furniture. You know, there's always somebody uh, getting rid of something of great value. And, you know, just recently, man, it's not that we didn't have the money to be able to go to Haverty's or Rooms to Go or someplace like that or buy, buy an expensive furniture set. But you got to think, man, for me, it's just not convenient. It's just not uh, a, a wise decision to be able to go out there and buy this furniture. And I got four dogs that historically have damaged doggone furniture. So we'll get a, we'll get a, a, a sectional or a two piece sofa off Facebook marketplace for a hundred bucks because somebody has recently upgraded their stuff and this furniture was perfectly fine. For a hundred dollars, we was able to get a, a whole living room set, leather and reclining. The love seat and the sofa, both reclining, hundred bucks. You gotta understand, man, Gen Zers rack up a lot of debt trying to get out there and get on their own. You gotta understand, why not just, why not just stay at home and pitch in and save some money? Pitching in could look like 400 bucks for you to your parents. Hey, I wanna stay here and I just wanna pitch in. That could look like 400 bucks for you compared to you taking on uh, you know, uh, an apartment, $800. You don't even really need all that space, but you're really using that space to be sexually immoral, to have your privacy. You know, you got water bills, phone bills. You gotta think, you leave home and go get your own phone plan when on your parents' phone plan, it only costs you $10 a month to add a line. Gen Z's got to be smart, man. I I've talked about it before. You should have one phone plan per family, and it should be nothing for the family members to pitch in at the beginning of the month, send $10, $12 to cover their portion of the phone bill. But the problem is, Gen Z's fall into a lot of these traps where they want to have the latest and the greatest phone bill, the latest and the greatest phone, Samsung, iPhone. So by the time you get your phone bill, it's not 50 or $60. You're looking at $120, $130. These are some of the, 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 the traps and snares that Gen Zs and millennials are falling into, okay? Man, I did a, I did a video talking about, you'd be surprised how the average uh, person in their 20s doesn't even work 40 hours a week. It's more like 36 hours a week statistically. I don't know how you can plan or, or, or fathom you're gonna be living high off the hole, uh, you know, working 30 some hours a week at a job that's paying the low end of minimum wage. The math just doesn't make sense, you know? And I encourage uh, Gen Z, if you have a skill, man, I don't care what it is, you know, go into business for yourself. Start something on the side outside of what you're doing. You know, if a job is giving you, you know, a lot of these jobs, what they're doing is keeping you part-time so they don't have to pay benefits. And what happens is you're like, man, I got this amazing job at Chick-fil-A and they're only giving you part-time hours and you barely cracking 30 hours, you know, a week. And you got uh, two and three days off throughout the week man, when you are young, you need to spend your time working. You got to understand, man, from 18, from 18 to about 24, 25, man, I was working 60 plus hours a week, minimum grinding, you know, uh, at 30, 32, 33, when we started our business, man, my hours were sometimes 80, 80, 90, hours a week just in order to work full time and get off work and get the business off the ground. And I, I don't live no doggone lavish lifestyle, no wealthy, I'm comfortable, but I don't live no lavish and wealthy lifestyle. Man, as an army recruiter, I used to talk to these, you know, uh, these young kids in high schools that had no perception of reality, no depth perception of reality. You know, they don't have a pot to piss in, don't work a job in high school. Uh, if they do work a job, they're not saving no money. They're just buying clothes and shoes. You know, expect somebody to give them something, expect a car to be given to them. 
uh, expect all this money to be saved up. And you know what I say, man, what you want to go to, uh, to go to, what do, what do you want to do when you graduate? Man, I want to be a YouTuber. I said, man, no, man, you got to do YouTube on the side. You don't doggone uh, jump out the, the house 18 years old and jump right into YouTube. You're gonna be homeless. You're gonna be homeless. Man, it took me, it took me a good while, you know, a couple years before learning the ways of, of making money on YouTube and getting to a point to where you had enough views, uh, you know, uh, affiliate links, you know, subscribers to where you can earn money. And I, I tell you, and, you know, doing this, I'm very thankful that on the side, I can have some additional income. But no way, shape, form, or fashion is that enough to maintain. But what has happened is social media is, social media has crippled the mind of a lot of these Gen Zs and millennials to where they see these one-off uh, influencers that make it big, make a lot of money, and they think they're automatically gonna be able to jump into that kind of success. And you are, you have doggone deceived yourself. If you go out and, and get an apartment and, and think you're gonna be able to pay your car note and you're just about to start your YouTube channel, good luck with that, I'm telling you. Don't do that. I would encourage you, if you got all these days off a week and your job is not giving you the hours, man, you need to plan plan and look for another job. Plan and look for another job. You know, as a Gen, as a Gen Z or millennial, when you are young, man, you can afford to go hard in the paint. You know, biblically, we are commanded to, to, to work six days and rest on the seventh. One rest day. It's these Romans and these Greeks that gave you the concept of weekend. What about my weekend? That's a Roman and Greek concept. I tell you, man, you know, I don't give a dang. A lot of these Gen Zers, man, don't really have any ambitions uh, or the intestinal fortitude or the willpower to want to do anything extra. I don't give a dang if you got to go to school at night, one class at a time in order to better yourself. That's better off than sitting up complaining about how your life is not turned out the way it want, you want it to and you're depressed and you're this and that. Nobody's gonna give you anything. You're gonna have to work for it. And then once you get it, you gotta find a way to maintain it because there's always gonna be something. The more money you make, the, the expenses are, are higher if you don't uh, control your standard of living. Just because you make a whole lot of money does not mean you got to live like you wealthy. You know, I, I, I get I get clothes out of Walmart sometimes. I buy clothes out of like uh, the, the, the tractor and feed store. T-shirts, seven, eight dollars. I'm not walking around in no doggone uh, Nike and all of that foolish no more for what? This stuff is keeping you broke. Close to the Yah Ministries, kicking it gun barrel straight. Wow.